Okay, aloha everyone. Um, today we're going to be looking at um, some shifting problems that I'm having with this 1974 uh, Volkswagen bus. Um, so backstory on this bus, uh, about a year ago um, this was given to me by um, some friends uh, and the bus was uh, up, in the, up in the mountains um, for probably about 35 years just sitting in the woods. Um, so it hadn't been driven this whole time. So over the last year or so I've been working on it, fixing it up. I put an engine in, took the other one out, put an engine in and, um, and got it running. But I immediately noticed that shifting was uh, extremely difficult. So um, I could get it into first gear, no problem. Um, but getting it into second gear was a problem. Sometimes it would go right into fourth gear. Um, so it was extremely sloppy and uh, was not, um, it was not smooth, uh, shifting smoothly at all. Um, so I started doing some research on it and the first thing that I, uh, that was suggested was to look at the nylon gu guide sleeve, which is underneath uh, and under the front of the bus. Um, so we're gonna take a look at that um, and I'll show you, show you what I found and then go over the process. Uh, this is my first time of uh, fixing it. I couldn't find anything online. I found a few things, but not that helpful, so I thought I'd make a video and uh, document this project, so hopefully it can help other people as well. All right, let's go take a look. All right, so here we are inside the vehicle. Um, so as I was saying, uh, I can easily put it into first gear. Um, actually, sometimes even that one's a little bit um, difficult, but then unless it's, like right now, seems to be going in pretty smoothly into second gear, uh, but when I took it for a test drive, like right now it's sticking. Um, when I took it for a test drive, I couldn't get it into second gear at all. So I was kind of stuck in uh, first and then I could shift over to third and fourth. Um, originally I thought it was maybe a, um, a clutch adjustment. So I would definitely uh, suggest before you go to any uh, major projects, uh, such as uh, trying to replace any of these guide sleeves, I would always uh, check with the check with your clutch play your um, pedal play um, and make sure that is uh, engaging the clutch fully so that you can um, that you can shift properly. Um, but uh, if that doesn't help and it didn't help me, uh, then then you have to take it to the next step, um, which for me was to remove that uh, pan underneath the front of the bus uh, and look and, and kind of do a visual and I'll show you what I found underneath there. All right, so hopefully this will be in focus for you. Um, but what we have here is um, directly under the shift knob, uh, the gear shift that comes down where my finger is, um, is a bracket in the chassis and this shift rod goes all the way back and engages uh, the transmission. So right here, what is missing right here is a nylon bushing that keeps this thing from all this movement that you see here. So I'm gonna see if I can get this to... So if you're shifting, this is what's happening. This is moving back and forth and engaging your different gears. And so what's happening right here is there's way too much play. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming, because I've never done this before, but I'm assuming this is affecting my ability to uh, shift into the gears appropriately. Um, so way too much movement in here. So my, um, the, my project is to take off the gear shift from above and then underneath down here, um, further on down the shift rod, um, I have to disconnect the front and rear shift rod back there, um, and uh, then I'll be able to pull the um, pull that lever up, and then hopefully get my new bushing on. Okay, so here is a shot of where the front uh, gear shift rod and the rear come together. So this is going towards the rear of the bus. This is going towards the front of the bus. And you have to clip this wire, take out this set screw, and hopefully these will, uh, these will separate right here. So according to the Bentley, um, here's what I was just talking about, uh, the front and rear gear, sh uh, gear shift rods where they come together. 
The first step is to remove the two bolts with washers on the inside of the vehicle that hold the gear shift lever assembly on the vehicle's floor panel. Um, then of course you're going to take that cover plate off, which I already did, underneath the uh, front of the vehicle. Cut this wire right here on the square head set screw. Remove the screw. And then you're going to pull apart the front and rear gear shift rods. Um, disengage the front shift rod from the guide pin as it, at its forward end. That's what I showed you. And remove the front rod and coupling from the vehicle. Uh, so for right now, I'm just going to replace, mine looks a little bit different, but I'm just going to replace this one. Hopefully that does the trick because to replace the ones towards the back, these two, you're going to need to uh, remove the transmission and engine and lower it down. So I'm hoping to avoid that because um, that's a lot of work. Well, disaster strikes. Um, got a broken bolt on this this one here and I fear that this one's gonna do the exact same thing they're both rusted a lot so um, that has just made this job into a lot bigger of a job than it would have been initially all right on to uh, plan B so I do have to admit this is my least favorite thing about working on old cars is broken bolts and busted knuckles. Um, I fear that this one up here is also gonna break. Uh, they're just too rusted to expect to come out. What I did is I sprayed a little bit more um, PB Blaster on there and I uh, have the impact wrench and I'm gonna give this a go. Uh, cross my fingers, hopefully it comes out. <laughs> No luck, it was just spinning on there. I think it stripped the threads out and just spun. So I'm out of luck with that bolt too. Okay, so one other technique that seems to be working uh, after hammering on it with that impact wrench is to just use a pair of um, good old vice grips. I think I must have loosened it enough with the impact wrench where it actually seems like it's turning um, albeit very slowly with the vice grips so with any luck hopefully I will be able to get this guy to come off all the way I don't know yeah. we shall see okay after um, much effort Luckily, this one came out in one piece, just to give you an idea of how rusty it is. Yikes. But it did come out after quite a bit of elbow grease and PB Blaster. And so this is spring-loaded. There's a spring in there, so it's gonna wanna push out as you're, as you're undoing it. This is what it looks like. Come on. So I've got, I've got quite a bit of cleaning to do on this. Um, and when I put it all together, of course, it will have to be greased. Um, so everything moves like it should. Um, okay. Next step, underneath the car. Okay, so I was able to get this piece out. Um, this, is the, this is the front part of it that goes uh, towards the front part of the bus. And luckily, this pin right here was not frozen. Uh, I just had to un um, I had to snip the wire that was holding it going through that little hole there. Um, and then this piece goes all the way through and um, <clears throat> and screws into the rear shift rod. So this came out. Uh, so obviously I'm gonna need to clean this whole thing up, um, get the new, nylon bushing on here um, and reinstall and then also clean everything else on the shift rod up and try and drill out that bolt that broke. Okay, I've got the connecting rod all cleaned up. Um, 
took some uh, wire brush to it and some engine degreaser and got all the gunk off clean this end up really well that's what's going to be sliding back and forth in that bushing um, clean that up in there and I'm going to be um, greasing everything uh, liberally to make sure that it um, operates as should okay I also wanted to give you a little peek at what that nylon bushing looks like in there um, this is the piece that was missing um, and hopefully that solves my problem here um, it wasn't that hard to get in there just a matter of kind of working it back and forth and getting your fingers in through the side here it does compress um, and it's got a little ring like a, a lip on both sides so it holds onto this side and it holds onto that side um, so next step is to put the rod back in all right so I've got all this good stuff cleaned up and a liberal amount of grease on everything so when I put it in there it, um, uh, it is well lubricated uh, I've got the stop plate greased up or um, cleaned up um, I'm replacing the two bolts with brand new ones um, here's the old one that came out here's I kind of lucked out with this one that was the one that broke off I was able to remove it from underneath uh, using a pair of channel locks so I did luck out with that one so hopefully be able to reuse the the same um, uh, threaded bolts or nuts that look like they're tack welded onto the bottom of that all right next up put this in all right so I know this kind of it part is kind of confusing so I thought I would uh, just video this real quick um, this is the correct positioning I believe from what I can see in the Bentley um, so this ramp is um, on the passenger side. This stop over here is on the driver's side. Passenger over here, driver this way. Let's see if this works. So this is what it looks like with the new bushing installed, the new nylon bushing. Um, and I've got it liberally lubed up with um, bearing grease. And as you can see, it slides back and forth really well, but there's none of that play that there was before. Okay, well, uh, the project is finished up. Um, I've got everything buttoned back up, gear shift uh, reattached. It does seem to shift a lot better now. I'm able to hit first and second, third and fourth gear, reverse. Um, everything seems to work pretty good. Um, it doesn't mean I don't need to replace those uh, back uh, urethane bushings as well at some point, but um, I think this has done the trick, trick for now. Um, as far as centering this or adjusting this, um, the, uh, the research that I did online, um, lots of different methods to try and adjust this. Um, basically, the simple um, idea that I came up with or, or found that somebody else suggested is uh, just try and center this as much as possible um, initially tighten it down um, see where you're at um, try and go through the gears take it for a little test spin if you need to adjust this shifter plate um, and um, fine-tune it um, then you can uh, then you can make those adjustments then um, basically I centered it it seems to work fine I'm not going to touch it unless it creates a problem at some point um, so that's it got it all buttoned up it's working good okay well that's it hopefully this video was helpful for you um, I'm glad it worked out on this end um, on to more adventures next time all right aloha and mahalo for watching